Oh, you know who we just had on the show uh, last was um, Marcel, basically I do work, and Symphony. If we 2v2'd them, <laughs> easy. <laughs> easy clap, bro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Courage and Nade Shot Show. Yes, Courage and Nade Shot Show. Courage comes first because I always do. We are here with a great guest today because guess what, folks? This year, he has rose to superstardom, whether it's on Verdansk or on the paddock. He is one of the brightest young racers in the world as he continues to be the shining star of McLaren F1. After a recent P3 performance from McLaren this year, Lando is poised to take center stage Next year, as F1 comes back and the seats are filled, hopefully, if COVID <laughs> is over. But he's become a good friend of mine this year. Lando Norris is on the show. Lando, welcome, man. Congrats on a great year. Thank you very much. What an honor. I've, uh, I started watching this show quite a while ago. And um, ever since I've become such a big-time streamer, it's, yeah. been, uh, it's been my dream, you know, to, to come in join this wonderful podcast with you so so thanks for the invite well yeah hey, of listen, course man thank you, thank you for usually, being here. so jack i think jack was like trying to uh prove himself so that he can be a, a caster one day for f1 i i'm pretty sure that's what that introduction was but we we orally we normally have like a, a a true breakdown so for anybody that doesn't follow f1 and wants to know more about lando norris he is the youngest ever british formula one driver and races for mclaren He's a winner of five championships, including the MSA Formula Championship and the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. And he is the one of the fastest growing and most viewed channels on Twitch. I actually, my first time playing with Lando was during the Fall Guys event of the year with Tim the Tatman trying to get his first crown. Uh, don't bring mm. that one up. <laughs> that one was a, a joy to be a part of, man. But I said it at, uh, when we first hopped on the call before we recording. I just appreciate you taking the time. You know, you know, we've had a variety of different guests from entertainment in, in, in the U.S., YouTubers, professional players. But I think Jack and I can both say this episode to cap off 2020 and end the year in the right way. Uh, just super, super exciting. So I really appreciate it, Lando. What's going no on in your life right now, man? What are you up to? What? Give me a breakdown. Uh, I actually don't follow F1 as much as I should. Um, yeah. After after the the the. Uh, the documentary dropped that's when it, last year that's when i was all in i haven't had a chance to watch season two but for anybody that's ignorant to f1 and what's going on in your career right now just can you give us a status update all right so the status update is uh everything's over now it is um <laughs> it's finished we had our last race obviously last weekend and um next race is uh what uh, i don't even know 20 21st of March in Australia. So I got a bit of a break now, a good couple months um, where I'll be going home, see my family because I haven't, I haven't been with my family since I'm pretty sure it was last Christmas. I think it was the last time I was actually you know, with my brother, both my sisters, my mom and my dad. So it's been a, obviously a weird year with everything that's been going on and especially to do my job with the traveling and everything. It uh, There was quite a few restrictions with what I could do. So it's Nice to, you know, have a break, be back here on my PC, gaming for a bit, streaming, uh, but then also, you know, have a bit, bit of a, a break away from the racetracks, away from everything like that, and uh, and enjoy some time off. So you guys have like a proper off season, like, you, I mean, two months, it seems like two and a half months. And you, you mentioned you haven't seen your family, which is, is, is terrible. I, want, I wonder if COVID wasn't affecting the world the way that it is, if that would have been the case, like in between races and on the circuit. But would you say that you're you have a an ability at a young age to just turn the noise off and and just focus on relaxing, you know, getting back mentally to 100 percent and preparing yourself for the next season? Or is it just something that you're always thinking about, like the track and, and, and figuring out what you could have done better in the, the prior years or prior races? Uh, are you able to relax and just turn it off? I mean, I would say a bit of both. I mean. Like. Uh... I think going home, seeing my parents, you know, having some time away from racetracks and away from MTC. So MTC is McLaren and I live around, I don't know, three minutes away from the base. So where they're, where they're set, 
Um, and I'm in there most weeks. So the fact that I'm not going to be going in for a while until probably end of Jan, I think beginning of Feb or end of Jan is the first time I'm going to be getting back to say work in terms of driving on the simulator, um, reviewing last year, preparing for the whole year. So until then, uh, I'm going to be completely away from it, you know, away from racing, away from race cars. Um, I mean, I have my simulator just here, which I'll probably still do a bit of things on every now and then more for enjoyment rather than trying to, you know, focus on driving and trying to improve or do anything like that. It's more for, for fun. Um, so I'm, I'm able to switch off, I would say pretty well. And, and I think that's helped by enjoying a lot of the other things, you know, you know, COD streaming, uh, golf, uh, those three things pretty much are like my, my main focus when I'm not at a racetrack. So they're, they're, they're good fun. That sounds like an age shot in a, in a nutshell <laughs> outside of the racetrack. Uh, um, he said yeah, golf it's... and the first thing I saw, thought of was that Shia LaBeouf, uh, GIF. Absolutely. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> that is seriously, you, you just summed up Matt as a whole, but no, I know, uh, you know, we're going to get so much into, into your career and things like that. Um, but also this year you launched uh, team quadrant. Uh, yep. which is such an awesome opportunity too. So we're going to get into all that, but as we get into it, we do have to give a shout out to one of our great sponsors, Lando. We have a sponsor. You'd be really proud of me. It's Cash App. This show is brought to you by Cash App. If you don't use Cash App, then fuck you. You're probably know the Cash App is the easiest way to send money to your friends and buy Bitcoin, but Cash App does way more than that. Cash App is also the easiest way to grow your money in the market with their investing feature. Unlike other investing tools that force you to buy entire shares of a stock, Cash App lets you own a baby piece of any stock with just uh, $1. Cash App investing is also free to use and free of fees. It's also simple to set up. Simply open up the Cash App, decide how much you want to invest in a single stock, and click purchase. Um, sounds like a pretty smart thing to do, investing in the stock market. Also, as always, we are stoked to be working with Cash App uh, to support the Gamers Outreach Foundation. If you guys haven't done this yet, then I literally dislike you. Go and do this right now. It is the holiday season. Go do this right now. Download Cash App, use the promo code Thieves, T-H-I-E-V-E-S. Not only will you receive $10, which is awesome, but even more awesome, the Gamers Outreach Foundation will receive $10 from Cash App. The Gamers Outreach Foundation is an amazing organization that provides video games to kids dealing with long-term treatment in hospitals. Again, that's promo code Thieves, T-H-I-E-V-E-S, on the Google Play Store or App Store today. So shout out to Cash App. But also, Lando, I have something that I need to pick a bone with you with. Um, about four months ago, you and I were supposed to have our F1 yeah. race. And now you know you're in your off season, and you're, I don't want to face you when you're off your game. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll see. But you were on your game, and you, you, you I think you backed away from the challenge. Is is what <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, you, did, I, huh? you know, well, look, look, we could literally. I, mean, I got <laughs> okay. my, I got my wheel right here. I'm good to go. <laughs> do you just have to have a wheel within three feet of you is that part of your mclaren yeah. contract yeah exactly but I, I mean i even i even leave my pedals below me so i can you know i'm playing cold and driving a car right i use the throttle and brake on my feet anyway although it's not connected but you know just yeah. to keep in that mentality but uh, uh we still have to do it i don't know I mean, what's I, your favorite track what's well, your go-to that, that's the issue is that i only played spa because my one friend said that it's a lot of fun to play and i knew that me playing a bunch of different tracks would not give me any sort of chance in having even a, 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 an opportunity to do anything in the race. But you so, chose yeah, played... one of the most difficult tracks. <laughs> okay. Well, my, friend, I, my friend Nico, who's a huge fan of yours, by the way. Uh, shout out to Nico, who might be watching this. I hate you, Nico. You put me on one of the most difficult tracks. You told me that that was a great beginner track, and you were completely wrong. So <laughs> A great beginner track. So you're a beginner. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? That's gonna do it for the show today, guys. If Lando's gonna, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, seriously, it was it that 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 moment in time because it was interesting because F1 was kind of still shut down or was just getting back yeah. in gear. I know you were doing. Uh, you were not only we were talking a little bit about you launching Quadra because that wasn't public yet, but then I know you were also getting into golf this year. So you you've had a year 
or at least it seemed like you were getting into golf with how much you were falling in love with it on your Instagram story. Was it was <laughs> was golf a new to this year thing? Mm, let's it's talk not, about this, baby. I wanna, <laughs> is, listen, is golf I was new gonna get you? through some real topics before I try to jump into golf. I feel like me and Lando talking about golf is me talking about anime with like ninety percent of our it's fine, guests. It's fine. Let's talk about golf, Lando. All right. Let me hear. Well, no, I mean, so I started golf probably like last year, but only um, uh, top golf, you know, so not 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 professionally or anything like that, but just I would go with some mates every now and then, we go to have dinner, whatever. So that was just good fun. And it's like 20 minutes away from me or 10 minutes. So I used to do that quite a bit, um, but I never played on a proper course until uh, lockdown, until mm. like middle of this year. And, um, and that was my first time. And Carlos, my teammate, He's a, a massive golfer. I think he plays off of uh, 12 or something. So he's pretty good. And he's been saying every single day that I need to go and play. And then we're playing together. And um, he's a nice guy to, to play with because he's, he's pretty good. And I kind of learn from him and he gives me tips and everything. But um, as soon as I started to play a lot, then um, I'm, I'm stuck with it. I pretty much, I've been the last four days, basically. I, I went to the golf course within one hour of me landing in the UK after being away for three weeks. I love so it. I'm in love with it. Dude, that's, that's amazing to hear. Yeah. What I, what I like to share with people in my stream or in my life or in my world that have never golfed before, it's, it's really hard to explain the, the addiction that the, that the sport can actually cause because people will watch professional golf and the way that it's delivered to you via broadcast. It, if you don't have somebody that you're truly a fan of, it could be yeah. tough to get into and really feel like you're a part of it. And once you get on the golf cart, first of all, getting out to like a driving range or top golf, sharing a pint with your boys, like nothing better. But when you finally get on the golf course and you hit like a flush iron or you hit a drive square on the face and you just watch the, the best ball. feeling ever. Exactly. Exactly. Like that's what I try to tell these kids that have never taken it up. I'm lucky enough to where my dad got me into golf. I was never that good when I was younger. But now that I'm older and can really appreciate the process of getting better, and when you see meaningful improvement, you know, by recording yeah. your swing or getting out to the range when you finally get on the course, it's, I'm telling you, like, as a man or a woman or whatever you identify as, if you hit a flush <laughs> golf shot, I'm telling you, like, it cures every ailment, every doubt in your mind, all the stress, it just goes away as you watch the, the ball fly through the air. And land on the green. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, yeah. you know, depending on when, how good you are, whether, I, so I'm a nine handicap right now. Um, oh, e not bad e at all. Thank you, man. E I've been working on it. From the, this year, I went from a 16 to a nine. But even if it doesn't okay. land on the green, man, just feeling that one perfect golf shot, just yeah, one yeah. time around, it's just, it's the best. And then, and then you three putt. Oh, oh <laughs> sometimes four, man. You never know. It, it, it gets crazy out here in these uh, in these city yeah. streets in LA. I mean, that's man. that's the annoying thing. Not annoying, but that's like the the frustrating but satisfying part about golf that you can do one hole and it just be shocking. Like you don't know what's going on. You think about it. You hit your next shot. You know, you hit your drive. It's like three hundred yards, whatever. And uh, and then you hit an eight iron or whatever, a nine iron onto the green, like is so annoying sometimes and so frustrating, but then it can just swap so quickly and you can have like the, the most happy moment of your life because you hit the best drive you've ever hit and, uh, and that's it. Then generally I'm happy for the rest of the week because I know I've hit one amazing drive and, uh, and then I can sh shout about it to my mates and then I'm super happy, so. Oh, I, I dream it. about it. It's, it's, it's honestly like the camaraderie of it too. Like the fact that you get out there with Carlos is, is really amazing. And it's just the best activity. I've definitely seen just an uptick in in the difficulty to get tee times out here in LA because typically yeah. you can golf year round. And it, it's it's one of those activities during COVID that is totally fair and totally open to you know doing this uh, even while pandemic is going on. So I, I love that you've gotten into the sport. Uh, if you ever have some downtime and find yourself in the US, I'd love to get out there with you. Jack actually d said for my birthday that was back in August that he would buy a set of clubs because Jack's a really competitive person. Uh, and I, he's talked about getting out on the course with us or going to the range. He's obviously very busy. I mean, both of you guys are just like in the, high, the, the, the highest parts of your career right now. And there's so much to focus on. But 
getting out on a weekend with your boys and, and just hitting some balls it's is nothing better so I'm, I'm actually what's really interesting about this weekend is uh tiger woods i was just catching up on twitter uh they have an event uh every single year where like professional golfers will team up with somebody in their family or a close friend and they'll make a, a whole weekend of it competition and tiger woods is actually playing with his son charlie woods for the yeah. first time ever this kid is i think like 11 or 12 years old and if you search on twitter the, they have like side by sides on the range of tiger and charlie swinging at the same time and it is electric Identical. this kid is so good it's gonna be so much fun to watch but jack we got to get you out there hey i'm ready you tell me when and i'm gonna go i know that i feel like jack's all here. talk no show Listen, you know, I'm not all talk in, in anything in life. What I am is just a go-getter, right, Lando Norris? I am someone who's uh, great at pop-off. You know, for example, we're playing Warzone. You get knocked, who's the first one there to res you? You get knocked again, who's the first one there to res you? You know, Tim gets killed. We, we got to buy Tim back. That's true. I play, with, I play with you and Tim, and we had to get Tim up a lot. So. Oh, you know who we just had on the show? Uh, Last was um, Marcel, basically I do work, and Symphony. And yeah. I know, uh, you know, those are two. If we 2v2'd two them. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy clap, bro. I mean, you 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 dove in with Warzone, and, and I could see your improvement, like, so quick from the, when we first played to later on. What was what was your experience like going from, like, because I remember first seeing your stream, and you were either playing with some other F1 drivers or some of your boys from home. Yeah. But then going into lobbies with, granted, I might not be the best, but some of these players that are literally the best players in the world, like what was that experience like for you as a, just a fan of playing Call of Duty with the boys to, whoa, I'm now in some of these crazy lobbies with, with this top player? Uh, I mean, I was, I was incredibly nervous. I mean, mainly because <laughs> of playing with you, Jack. You know, you're my hero and everything. Well, thank but, you. Thank you. Um, it's, this, it's the same thing with racing, you know, like, you're in a, a lower level or a lower category and you're looking up to these people who, you know, you watch on stream or you watch videos of or clips of whatever. And yep. uh, you just think that like, they're just cool. You know, they're awesome. And they're, they're doing these amazing things, which you eventually wish you could kind of do and you hope you can do. So when I first started COD, which was only earlier this year, and uh, like I never played COD or anything before it, then uh, when I started, I was terrible. But I would watch a lot of these videos and I see these, you know, these guys doing amazing plays and the CDL and everything like that. And like, I, I knew I was crap at like, when I first started, but then I, would, I did a lot, a lot, a lot of hours. And then, you know, I'm, and then we get to play with you and uh, a lot of the other guys who are just incredible. And it's like, um, I'm learning from them and I'm trying to do better, but it's, it's the same thing that I'm just as competitive with every single game. Yeah. Uh, as I am with racing. So I want to do well. I want to do better. I hate losing or, you know, if you beat me, that's an embarrassment. But still, I hate, would hate losing to anyone. So as soon as I get beat by a teammate or something, then it's annoying and I want to do better. And it's the same, exactly the same as I have with racing. Well, I know, you know, you got to become close in, in gaming and, and played a lot with uh, 100 Thieves' new member, Tommy, uh, who's yes. literally one of the brightest minds in Call of Duty, uh, was always a shining star for the UK scene when he competed. And to now have him under 100 Thieves, I think that's part of, you know, Matt's vision for what you brought up, right? Like, Warzone's such a big game, and why I love that 100 Thieves is continuing to build out into Warzone, right? A new update just came out. Um, it's going to continue to grow, continue to be something that people want to watch, and to have, you know, Tommy rated and hopefully more down the road. Um, I think it's exact, exactly what you're mentioning. It's like people look up to these guys for how insanely good they are, and then yeah. you got a chance to play with them, and it's just... it's. It's cool to hear from your perspective. I think as well, because I know I'm, I'm lucky to be able to. Like, I guess it's a perk of being in the position I am and working hard to get into F1 and then kind of being more well-known for that, but also for, you know, streaming on Twitch anyway, because I, I like doing that and I don't, do, I don't do that because I have to. I do it because I enjoy it and, and I like doing it. Of course. It. So uh, then having the perks of, you know, I played with probably Tommy the most out of you know a lot of the the good players, and um, I feel it because I know not many other people get that chance to play with these guys, and yeah. uh, you know you watch them every day on stream, and a lot of the time they're playing with similar people, but then that one time you get that opportunity, you just feel like honored in some ways that you're playing with 
you know, the same level as what an F1 driver is to some, you know, eight year old kid that's starting in racing. It's the same with me and COD, you know, I'm a new guy and, and uh, a newcomer on the scene to COD, but I'm getting to play with the, the top of the whole game. So it's that same level of, um, of competitiveness and playing with these top guys, which you, you know, you look up to in, in a lot of ways. No, it's, it's, it's so true, man. And, and I think you hit the nail on the head, like people get so excited that you're also streaming on Twitch, not only just because you're streaming, but because of how much you genuinely love it. And I think Matt's experienced this a lot. It's like, there's times where people will just try to hop in or, or opportunities come up where, Oh, you want to play with this interesting person. And then you hop in with them and you're like, man, I can tell this person's probably never played this game before. Uh, yeah, I know Matt <laughs> bad experience oh, certain things like that in his career, and you know it was great. Like when we when we hopped in together, you're, you're I'm in the lobby for two seconds, and just by the terms you used talking about the game, I was like, "Oh, Lando's a real one!" Like, let's go. We're about to we're like uh, instead of me having to feel like I'm trying to make the like instead of trying to like having to like almost like coddle you or, or 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 give you an experience and hope that you have fun i was like bro i know i'm gonna be able to banter with him he's gonna know everything you need to do when i get sniped he's gonna easily re you know pick me up and res me and pull his weight yeah the next, I, you know, I always stick my res i you know i always stick my res you know that, hey so. pros don't fake bro it's been that, that, well, that that's been the rule for uh for years i think in a lot of ways too it, it i think it just says something about this generation of like fame right i mean lando obviously one of the most popular f1 drivers and i think it's easy to forget that you're 21 years old and the thesis for 100 thieves and what i tell this story a lot when we pitch to investors trying to start the company is that this new generation of our stars in our world like our athletes our artists our celebrities they've now all grown up with video games to like some degree. So it's it's not like you're playing with like a 35 year old, like NBA retiree, you know, yeah. this kid's young, he understands the culture, understands video games. And the yeah. fact that you're streaming on Twitch for the fun of it, I, I just think is amazing. Yeah, I think it's there. Like, there are a few things I really enjoy in, in life. One is obviously driving, then there's COD um, and streaming and everything like that. And uh and then there's golf. Like those are, if I could set out a perfect day, you know, that's that's what I do. Um, and I would literally do that all day. And I'm a bit of a nerd, I guess, when it comes to, um, you know, a lot of other drivers, they're not into the, the streaming or the gaming or anything like that. You know, they're more yeah. normal in a lot of ways. More normal. But, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, it's not normal, you know, it's not normal when you're spending whatever, you know, 13, 14 hours a day uh on on games on streaming and yeah. driving on your simulator you know that's not i guess maybe it's more normal nowadays but it wasn't you know several years ago so yeah um i that's that's literally all i do and i'm a nerd when it comes to playing games and all those things just because it's it's a lot of fun but so it's that's so it sounds like yeah. you're having more fun than all of them um so we talked a little bit about streaming. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask a little bit about this year uh, in racing. I mean, I know you do a ton of media like before and after the races and really talk about your performance, but I feel like I need to scratch that itch for all of our F1 fans that have watched the show. So um, I, I would assume if I remember correctly, your P3 was your best placing this year. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Can, My first, can, first ever one that i mean it's incredible like just to reach podium um from what i've seen is just an incredible feat in f1 and i, I want to say personally congratulations to you even though you probably heard it from uh every individual in your life but I, I i would love for you just to give us a breakdown of that day that weekend how you were feeling going into the race and maybe like just post-mortem like what was that euphoric feeling like for you to finally reach podium how did you celebrate with the team I would just love to get, uh, you know, for the, all, all the F1 dedicated fans out there, just a little bit more insight as to how that weekend went. Yeah, sure. So it was it was our first weekend back after COVID. Um, so things were still like very new to us, very abnormal. Um, everyone was in their bubbles and, and everything because it's, it's pretty strict within Formula One what, with what you can do. So it was our first race of the whole year. And, you know, it was after waiting, whatever, three, four months of, of not doing anything. Um, and I guess I'm in a position where I know, I, not, I don't know, obviously, but, you know, I'm pretty certain or we, we're pretty sure that we're not going to score a podium unless something magical happens because 
the cars aren't quick enough and and in formula one everyone creates their own their own car from from pretty much from scratch and there are very certain things which are are maybe limited but still you can explore and it's whoever can come up with the best design you know can probably has an advantage so it's not let's say uh completely level playing uh, a level playing field on the racetrack because some cars are better than others and over the past few years mclaren have been getting better and better because we had quite a rough patch a few years ago and um so i'm kind of coming in you know with high hopes and expectations because it's the first race of the year but also um because it's my second year in formula one i'm a lot more confident and, and ambitious and so on so we come in it's one of our best tracks uh, it was on austria a uh, track called red bull ring and we did uh, very well there last year. I think I had P5 or something last year. So it was still one of my best races. Um, so we're confident, but nothing was, you know, incredible until Sunday. And uh, I was P5 or something in qualifying or P4. Uh, so, I mean, it was it was going well at that point anyway. But um, we had a really good race. And uh, the race is what, one and a half hours or something. Um, things were going really well. I was into to P6 um with three laps to go so you know good points looking good for for the first weekend back um i think carlos was was p7 or something at the time and then um two laps to go i had, I had two guys that i just caught up because i was on di a different strategy so i pitted much later than them which meant i had much fresher tires and i was much quicker then uh two laps to go i got ahead of both of them um and uh or one and a half laps to go i got ahead of both of them and i didn't need to take that risk you know it was just uh I, at that point i was just going for that one position and I, I got into fourth there was a bit of contact with the guy um quite risky my overtake and um and i was happy i got into fourth but as soon as i did that i got told um on the radio because we can speak to our engineers that the guy so hamilton lewis was um was in p3 and had a five second penalty for contact uh, at an earlier stage of the race with another driver. So at that point, I was something like uh, 6.3 seconds behind. Um, and I had one and a half laps to magically try and catch uh, uh, that 1.3 seconds. And um, I did my last lap, and there's the video on YouTube where anyone can go and see, and my engineer is talking to me throughout that whole lap. Uh, you know, do this with your... Because you have... I don't know if you've seen a Formula One steering wheel, but there, there's so many buttons and switches and different modes, and we can change the car's handling and everything like that just with with some dials and buttons. And uh, so it's telling me seven. all these things exactly. Scenario <laughs> seven. So a little bit more, a little bit more power. That's the famous one. Um, all these different things to try and just give me that last you know, one thousandth even or, or a couple hundredths of a second. And uh, and I do my lap. Um, nail everything was a uh, fast lap of the race, and um, and then this is like pause. My engineer doesn't say anything for like ten seconds, um, while all the the orders coming through and he's working it out and everything, and um, and I was like out of breath. I was just waiting, um, and then he told me that I was four point eight seconds or four point nine seconds to Lewis, which um, which meant I had my first podium, and it was a, I guess it's a dream. It's what you dream of since you're. Well, I dreamt of since I was a little kid, uh, seeing it on TV and everything. But it was like so much adrenaline and everything with those last few laps, trying as hard as I can um, to achieve something which, you know, extremely few people ever achieve in, in Formula One. So it was probably one of the best, best moments of my life. And um, the team was so happy because it was their second podium in, I don't know what, five, six, seven years or something. And uh, it was just awesome. It's the best feeling. It's hard to describe it because, you know, you're just in the moment. Of course. It's just what you love doing. But it was it was freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I guess for me, just more so as a fan of the the level of intensity that your 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 mind and your being probably reaches in these moments. I, I mean, I think it it's hard for anybody to comprehend, you know, going 200 miles an hour in, in, in a vehicle. And to do that consistently for 90 minutes just sounds like the most intimidating feat uh, to try to accomplish. And for me, I guess after those 90 minutes or like the typical 90 minute uh, time span that a race goes through, how much, how, how much, like, are you just pure tranquility and you're in the moment, you find that zone and you're locked in and everything just feels like you're making the right decision. You're, 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 you're passing 
other racers and everything's going as perfectly as you want it or when you mentioned at the end there just so much adrenaline when you get to the end of the race is your yeah. body do you feel like you got hit by a truck just because of the adrenaline dump that your body just went through or can you just talk yeah. like what those 90 minutes mentally are like for you right so i think the most nervous part of the whole thing is the start um you know there's 20 cars on the grid uh, yeah. And the starts where you can m gain or lose the most positions probably throughout the whole race. Um, and it's your highest chance of, of crashing and something going wrong. So that's the most nervous bit. You know, the lights coming on, one, two, three, four, five, then you have to wait a couple of seconds and then they go off. And that that's like probably when my heart rate is at its highest and um, and the most nervous bit for everyone in, in, in Formula One. But then... You do the first few corners, you know, hearts racing, everything, adrenaline's high, you're reacting, racing people, but then it settles down. And the last, you know, the, the whole middle section, you maybe have some pit stops every now and then, and then it rises. But then when we're driving, because I've been doing it for, uh, what would it be now? Um, something like 13, 14 years. It, it feels very natural. You know, it's what I'm used to because I do it so often and, uh, mm -hmm. It's obviously what I'm, I'm I'm good at at the same time. So it's just something I can relax in in doing. And although I'm driving, you know, like you said, 200 miles an hour, 220, then and the cornering speeds are insane. And it's, the TVs don't do us any justice when it kind of comes to to the cornering speeds we do. Then I'm I'm you know I'm really chilled. You know I'm going down the straight. You know, just looking at people in the grandstand. Um, you're just singing to yourself, like probably most people when just in a car journey that you can just easily have a conversation. And that's what I'm like through the majority of the race. And probably a lot of other drivers are the same that when they're just driving, it's normal for them. But um, I think in this type of race, like the first race of the season, um, when you're racing people and you have to make split decision, uh, split second mm -hmm. decisions, then that's when everything like starts building up and you've got the adrenaline pumping up again and, and your mind has to really focus. Um, and you can't forget, you know, if one thing goes wrong um, or you misjudge something by a couple of tenths of a second, then it can be a nasty crash, you know, or you can uh, or you can hurt someone or something can just go very badly wrong and you can be out of the race. So there's, as relaxed as I am, like, you know, a few millimeters away or centimeters every single lap, you're away from probably having a very big crash and something going terribly wrong. So it's like a weird feeling, but it's, it's normality for me, but it's it's quite difficult to describe, you know, unless you've been in a race car or something, what it's like to to do something like that. I, I had two questions. You know, one was going to go into kind of the camaraderie of all the guys in F1. I know um, Roman Grosjean had had his, you know, uh, crazy crash recently. And, and you know, I, yeah. he was really grateful for the halo that's on the car because he's now recovering but i saw the outpouring of support from not only f1 for him but i was blown away by the amount of love shown from other f1 drivers you know what is it like with that camaraderie in f1 you know i know you, you, you i've again seen you game with some of these other guys but then yeah is everyone close is there is there definitely rivals where they're like oh yo don't go near <laughs> yo don't go near verstappen and 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 you know, Lando Norris, you know, they they got beef. Is, is it like that or not really? I think uh, there, there is. I mean, there's there's people, you know, you have to give, you know, a few more centimeters, a few more inches to because they're a little bit more, you know, on the edge, a bit more risky and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some people you maybe want to stay away from that little bit more. But I think when you're on track, it doesn't matter who you are. Everyone's just trying to beat each other. Yeah. And in the end of the day, it's it's just a race and you just do everything you can to beat that person. But I think when the helmets are off and everyone's, you know, just this humans and personalities are coming through and everything, then um, you still have some rivalries and you have people, you know, you, you maybe don't talk to or, um, or you avoid and people you just don't get along with and so on. But you also have some, some guys who, you know, can be your best mates and like me and Carlos or uh, me and Max, you know, we're, we're just very, we're just good friends. So you still have that. But um, I think in terms of a racing driver's mind, when you see something that happened to Roman, like, you know, you saw a few weeks ago. Yeah. Even if the, the only thing you want to do is beat them the whole year and it's some, someone you don't like, um, the last thing you ever want to see is something bad happen to someone. And I think 
the bit that we know is that it could have been anyone. It could have been me. You know, it could have been uh, it could have been Lewis. It could have been any driver on the grid. Could have been in that scenario just because you've misjudged something by a few centimeters or you've turned at the wrong angle. Something like this can happen. And I think um, as much as every driver, maybe some drivers dislike each other and hate each other. Yeah. This is the, you know you never want to see this, but it was it was heroic to see him jump out and and be alright and uh and um hopefully drive a car again. So I think yeah. yeah, there's this rivalry, but there's also a huge amount of respect between every single driver, and um I think that's something you got to have in Formula One. Yeah, Who's, and, uh, and, oh, go ahead. and I and I think the rivalries. I mean, at the end of the day, you guys are in a sport where some of the most ridiculous amounts of monies are spent. You're, you're yeah. on the biggest stage. Th those egos have to exist, right? Of course, in, in my mind, in rivalries yeah, yeah, and storylines, I think the F1 documentary on Netflix, I don't know how much it's talked about in the sport from like team to team or how much you guys talk about it or hear about it. But I think it was an incredible moment for the sport of racing just because it brought in so many new uh, viewers. I mean, for me, I, it's like in the U.S., you grow up with NASCAR, and I'm, I, I've yeah. never watched NASCAR a day in my life. I love cars. You know, I finally have the means to buy a, a, a nice car, and I never really bridged the gap between, like, my my appreciation for this machine that I'm driving to some of the, the, the best athletes in the world racing these cars, but also the rivalries and the stories that exist within. It's like if you can take somebody from like middle America who has no interest in, in anything related to cars and, and, and make them appreciate and love F1 just through this doc. I, I mm -hmm. think it just goes to show like those storylines, those egos that are built through the storytelling and just the moments that happen in these races. It's incredible for the sport. And, and hopefully it's well received throughout the entire industry. Um, I, maybe you could talk a little bit about how people have viewed from like the inside out, um these couple seasons of drive to survive so i think uh you know drive to survive is pretty new and it's only been what like two seasons and the third's coming out ne next march um but it's i think the thing that's so good about it is that you see all behind the scenes you see like how raw the emotions are and how just normal people we are and we're swearing we're shouting at each other mm. we're just normal you know you get mad and and pissed off at everything um and that that's just very relatable to to basically everyone in the world and um three four five years ago you were never seeing this is that much you know you're just seeing formula one cars go around and then an interview before and after the race of a driver but you don't see the the, the passion that goes into everything as much as what you see now and i think that's why so many people um love watching the netflix doc is that you're seeing all of this. You're seeing, you know, people scrap with each other, each other, and and have these arguments, and people getting fired, and uh, and you just see how how difficult life within Formula One is. Although it's probably such an, you know, such a glorious, um, awesome uh, sport that you get to watch. So um, the first two, I'm going to admit, not as good as what what season three is going to be because oh. uh, they did. They don't include me. So now, um, <laughs> so oh, I, like I, think, you, <laughs> I think season three is going to be a lot better, um, especially because uh, I'm hoping episode one is going to be uh, all about Austri uh, Austria and, um, mm. and us scoring, or me scoring, and us as a team scoring my first podium of, uh, of the whole year and ever. So um, yeah, people be better you know, get ready and, uh, and watch out because I think uh, it gives just this different perspective of what a formula one driver is uh not just a tv where you see cars go around in circles it's um you see a lot more about the the drivers and the team themselves and um a lot of people that i you know i meet now or or get into formula one say they've only got into it because of watching the netflix documentary so i think it's nice that it's reaching these new people which yeah. never would watch ordinarily race cars on tv i have uh, wait, oh, you, I, I'm sorry, you, Jack. I have one going. last question. I, look, and then I'm going to let you. This one's a short one. Just right. because I wanted to ask it earlier when I asked about the adrenaline dump and sure. finding that zone and understanding. Lando, when I was in competition, obviously nowhere near the level of anxiety and stress and adrenaline of uh, F1. But when I was competing, I was over, I was somebody that was nervous before the match, never knew what was going to be the result. 
And as soon as I got into the match, it's like, okay, I play Call of Duty 12 hours a day. I got this. But for me, I am a nervous peer. Like when, when I get nervous, no matter how much water I've had in the day or energy drinks or whatever the case may be, I pee. Have you ever been in a situation while in a car in the middle of a race where you just had to let it fly? Like it, it, there's nothing stopping this, 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 this dam is going to explode. Have you ever had to soil yourself in the middle of a race? I had to ask. Uh, I haven't, but I know a lot of people that have. I think I think a lot of drivers do piss themselves, uh, and especially not so much in Formula One. You know, one and a half hours is long, but it's not it, it's not insane comparing to endurance racing when you can be in a car for like uh, three hours. And I did a mm. Daytona twenty four hour a few years ago, um, and I had to drive for three hours, so four or five stints or whatever it was, uh, four or five, and. Um, I got I got extremely extremely close because uh, we have a water bottle and you know when you're driving for three hours in the dark, like sometimes your mind wanders and all of a sudden the only thing you can think of is how much how much you need to go for a piss all of a sudden. So <laughs> the the worst the worst scenario is you're driving, you know, um, but when you're racing, you're kind of you're thinking about racing. You don't think of you know going for going to the toilet. But then if there, if a safety car comes out and there's a crash or something and uh, all of a sudden the adrenaline goes away because, you know, you're driving behind a safety car, you know, 50, 100 miles an hour um, quite slowly, then then that's the bad bit, right? That's the bad bit when you just think, ah, oh, shit, now, now, now I need to be going to the toilet all of a sudden. So it's, uh, it's not something I've ever done, touch wood, um, and luckily for my mechanics. But uh, it is something I know a lot of people do do. You're only 21, man. Your day will come. I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. When, I, when I'm a bit older, maybe it's something I just. That's 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 what must be why they have all that champagne when people celebrate. It's just the mask, the smell of piss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, Jack. I'm sorry, man. I stole no. your, your 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 moment a couple no, times. No, you're good. Now, you're so good. Let it um, rip. I know, Lando. We we've talked a, a few times about. You know, once COVID's over, which race should we come to? My girlfriend loves to travel. Yep. Um, I know Charles Leclerc has a girlfriend, but she has a crush on Charles Leclerc. I don't know if that would be bad if I <laughs> if she meets him because then maybe she'll be out of love with me. And now I'm just kind of thinking my own thoughts. But um, which race should Matt and I show up to? I mean, first off, I think they would just let me in. <laughs> if I walked in with ninja shoes and said, "Hey, I'm Lando's friend," <laughs> do they let me in looking like this, or do I have to wear like a suit? And second, if you had to pick a race, you're like. This is the race you guys should come to. We're going to get dinner. We're going to go do this. What what race would it be? All right. So there are, I would say there are three, three or four that I think are, are just awesome. Okay. Number one is the one everyone would talk about, Monaco. Of course. Um, just insane. You know, a load of celebrities. The this the life there is, and the the atmosphere is just awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Monaco. So that's number one. Number two is probably the easiest one for you, Cota, Circuit of the Americas in Texas. Um, again, good fun. Uh, downtown is just awesome, and it's just the, the nightlife there is nice and on 6th Street and everything. And the, again, the life away from the racetrack itself is cool, but also the racetrack itself is cool. So I would say that's number two. Number three and number four are Japan. It depends if you want to fly all the way to Japan. Course, but uh <laughs> i need to go to japan that one's at night right no that's no singapore. no no yeah God singapore so that's that's number four number four is singapore um just a cool again it's in the middle of the city it's a night race uh singapore is a nice place too um nice and warm uh, and then japan just it's japan japan's freaking crazy it's awesome the fans are incredible yeah. uh and you can go out for Wagyu every single night, you know? So, and it's just, it's Wagyu just a win-win. Wagyu shits, man. I can't do it. <laughs> it's just too rich. Dude. I, oh, I don't man. think I'd want to go to Monaco just because it, it, there's a line from a Big Sean song where it's like he was around Kanye and Hove and he said a million dollars never seemed so broke. I don't think I'd want to go to Monaco just because I feel like I've done pretty well for myself, but I'll just feel dirt poor around all these people. I just don't <laughs> think I could do it. I mean, some of the, the yachts that some of the people have there is insane. 
Oh, no, I bet they're all like, hey, Lando, come on the yacht. Yo, Lando, <laughs> uh, we got this party. You need to come through. Uh, it must be incredible to be a yeah, driver out there. Yeah, quite a bit. Quite a bit. I mean, it's just, it's yeah, there's a lot of perks, I guess, of uh, of racing in Formula One and, and creating the atmosphere there. Is you know, It's because of Formula One and because of the people driving. So there's, there's a lot of cool things we get to do um, because we just drive cars quite fast. So it's, it's awesome. It's, it's good fun. Now, we would be remiss if we didn't get to talk about Team Quadrant before this ends, because I know um, you showed me a, little yeah. bit, a, little, a couple <laughs> secrets here and there prior to its big launch, and uh, I know it's been really well received. Uh, the YouTube videos are popping, and, and you know, you guys have a content mind. You know, what was your inspiration for launching Team Quadrant? Why did you want to, you know, I know you're passionate about it, but what was that process like for you? Because obviously we have Matt here who, you know, launched Founded 100 Thieves. Um, yeah. You know, what, what, I what, mean, was, what was it like launching an organization like this? It's all because of Matt. You know, ever since <laughs> I, I watched Matt and I saw, you know, what he once was and, the, you know, the, the man he's become, golfer, um, you know, professional. top player in COD, okay. top streamer, for, sorry, <laughs> professional <laughs> golfer. <laughs> uh, you know, I saw, you know, he, he made an esports team and everything and, and I wanted to follow suit and that's why... Uh, that's why I did it. Not not because I've always wanted to do it, and I think yeah, it's just right. awesome and and so on. But there's a lot of reasons. But I think the main one is it's outside of Formula One. It's the thing I I just love doing, and I spend a lot of time doing. Whether it's sim racing, um, just playing online with my mates. You know, whether it's COD, FIFA, Rocket League, um, PUBG, all of these kind of things. I I love doing, it. and I can also do it when I'm away. At a racetrack, you know, I take my laptop with me. I can game. I can still have a lot of fun, and uh, and that's why. So it's more something again long term that I can look after and and make and create and um, mainly be, mainly come around, I guess, because of of lockdown and having a lot of time away and thinking about it and so on. But it's just another one of the things I love, or one of the other few things I love uh, is is esports and and things in general. And, uh, and those are the reasons. I love it, man. Oh, yeah. To see, uh, you know, somebody in the position uh, like yourself and at such a young age to be so interested in the industry, I think is incredible. And I, I can't wait to see, you know, obviously you have like a full time gig right now, very busy, yeah. uh, but just any involvement at any level with Team Quadrant, I think is just phenomenal for our space and, and for th th this world of video games that we all love. So I can't wait to see you do more with it. I appreciate the kind words uh earlier obviously as well um we, we dude we gotta get back on verdansk man I, I know you're gonna go see your yeah. parents i don't know if you got a setup at home i'm traveling a little bit for the holidays covid safe uh obviously but we we gotta play some more games man because that that small stint of fall guy just wasn't enough man we gotta we gotta drop in verdansk and I, i'm glad you've been playing with tommy i like i i'll let you know man i've been playing with tommy or against him for i mean we started competing against each other like a <laughs> decade ago and just to see the success that he's had, he's a phenomenal player. So good at Warzone. So I'm glad that you yeah. guys linked up and have been playing. No, I mean, Tommy's, Tommy's freaking awesome. He's one of the, I would say, I think the first um, yeah, pro player that I, I started playing with. Top guy, just super, super nice. Um, you know, really funny. We've had a lot of, a lot of good laughs. And you know, it's, it's nice being able to play with someone like that who you know, shares similar passions and things, loves doing what he does. Um, cool streamer and uh, just a very nice guy. And it makes it so much more easy, so much easier to just, you know, share your experiences and have fun and, and also learn from him because he's obviously a fairly handy at the job he does. So, mm. um, you know, one day might have to watch out because he could be coming to Team Quadrant, but uh, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 hold on now. Damn, well, yeah, well, he buyouts, might, he might <laughs> 10 million, he might so. jump ships, so don't say <laughs> shit like that. We just got him, bro. He, let him win us a couple of Warzone tournaments with him and Rainy right, first right. before he hops over to Team Quadrant because <laughs> you were talking about amenities, all the perks. I, I would actually argue that F1 drivers probably have some of the best amenities with the cities that they go to and the people that are interested in them. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't think there's any sport in the world where more billionaires are probably just looking at you like you're their prized hen, like, 
I want to give you the life. And uh, <laughs> you, Team Quad's an approach is Tommy. I don't know if we can do anything to stop him. Lando, yeah. I've got a, a unique idea that I was talking about. We had our our, our leadership uh, meeting yesterday with all of like the heads of departments at 100 Thieves, sort of talking about yep. 2021 and planning. And we're coming. To, we're trying to come up with unique ideas that can bring awesome moments to our fans and just the industry. What do you think about next year? Um, maybe not 2021, but maybe 2022 when you're on your yep. break. We do a pay-per-view. So there's definitely going to be a paywall. We're going to make these kids open up their wallets to watch this pay-per-view event. We do a match play on the golf course. You get a partner. Oh, I get a partner. No. And we, 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 we go bonkers. I don't know if you got to pay attention to, like, what Tiger and Phil Mickelson did with, like, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. And then they did it again with, like, yeah, Charles yeah. Barkley. That's what we need to do, man. Or we make or it like uh, I, th a, I think that's a good idea. I think we could get a lot of big people doing it as well. I think All right, so you're in, bro. Sign it in blood right now. I'm in. Mean, I would your say hand open and just put it up on the camera, and that's. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I would say, 2022. You know, because you know I got to get a bit more practice in. I got to hit the range a few more times. Get my lessons in. Um, because what you say you play off of nine eight. I'm I'm like an eight point five, but I round up to a nine just so that my my buddy who's a two handicap doesn't get that oh. many. I don't get that many strokes on him, but it, it's a joke, bro. I I hate watching golfers that are 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 much better than me because it just seems so effortless. It, it's yeah, like they'll hit a ball out. They of look like they don't even sudden. try. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I got to struggle, bro. As long as I can keep the 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 ball in bounds, I can I can shoot low. It depends on like the what type of greens that we're on and what type of yep. slope that they're playing at or whatever. Um, but for me, as long as I keep the, the ball in bounds, which is really tough in California, uh, just because you're playing in like mountainous areas. And if you go left or right, you're in OB, but it's the good players, yeah. you'll, you'll see them, you know, send like three or four balls out of bounds and around. And they're saying, Oh yeah, I, I part, I part, I part. I'm like, how the fuck? <laughs> let, me, let me count these strokes real quick for you just to make sure. And sure enough, dude, it's, it's the best, man. Jack, we got to get you out there. I, I can I honestly, mean, Lando, sit here and talk with you about golf for an hour straight. Yeah, I, I could as well. I mean, Jack, Yeah. I don't know if you'll be in golf by then, mm -hmm. but you can at least drive the golf buggy and be my caddy. Wow. Listen, that's all I need. I, you know, I thought Matt would maybe ask, but I see who my real friend is here. Um, exactly. I got dibs. Oh, thank you. And I'll, well, you know, I, I'll I, I definitely don't want you on my bag. Let's just I'll be clear. Snacks. You you say you want your nine iron. I got it. You want your you want your driver. I got it. That's the one that looks like bigger. I, you know, I got I got. What else could you, you want? A foot massage? I got. Yeah, that'd be nice. It, it just it just seems a little unfair though, just because Lando, you just started, but I can't imagine like the rolodex of people you could dig into for like a premium lesson. I mean, it's like uh, like Michael Jordan back in his heyday, and I'm obviously not comparing you to Michael Jordan, and um, no, so I don't I want the viewers at home to him. get me crazy. I mean, he's still 21. My man's got a lot to prove, but I'm sure he's going to do it. This this man, uh, Michael Jordan, in between games, was out on the course with like Tiger Woods. I, I, I can't imagine. Have you golfed with any professional players, or do you have any interest in getting out on the course or having a lesson or just shooting around yeah, on yeah. the range? One guy, um, Ian Poulter. Oh yeah, hey man, he's a top lad, bro. Top blow. He he's... is. Uh, we did some of the sim races in um in lockdown, and he joined us for them. He's a big a big F one fan. Um, he's he's partnered with DP World, which is a partner of Renault, so he kind of loves Renault and everything. But uh, he's also a big McLaren fan and and Formula One fan in general. And uh, I think we're trying to. I don't know when, but we're trying to sort out like a bit of a a golf day um with uh with mclaren or whoever and and him and he's pretty he's pretty handy bro he's got a he's got a pure swing man um it's nice yeah, it, yeah. it's beautiful dude like i said professional golfers it, it's effortless oh, wait, so he's he's the guy that's the guy i can probably call right now and just say let's do it let's go to the so course. i have you had an opportunity to jump into the new update on warzone with the cold war weapons uh, I played yesterday, last night. I played for the first time on the new update. Um, first impressions. Been, I mean, I was getting killed by an invisible bloke for half the time, so... <laughs> not gonna lie. Okay. Why? That wasn't the most fun. But at the same time, the new map and everything, different, you know, probably quite a bit faster paced in some ways. Um, 
it's good. I think finally a bit of change, at least, you know. Yeah. I've been doing Verdansk for, was it, three seasons now? Um, and Verdansk is a wonderful place. You know, many memories are being created in, in Verdansk and downtown. But uh, nice, there's a, a little bit of a change, different map, a different play style and things like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. Lando, you got a girlfriend? Nope. No? Nope. What, what, is, what is it like when you approach the track? I, I mean, look, it, bro, the 16-year-old kids at home, I mean, when I was 16 years old and I was looking at professional athletes, I couldn't, I probably couldn't imagine the, the situations they find themselves in. Do you just have girls throwing themselves at you? <laughs> hey, yeah, you don't have to say if you partake or, you know, <laughs> or anything. I'm just saying, like, I can't imagine what your DMs look like on Instagram. Um, I, 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 got, I have to ask, like, do I, they must be, you must be dodging them left and right. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, as soon as, if you're in Formula 2, you know, it's like, you know, maybe use it to help you with a girl sometimes, you know, I, oh, I race race cars and I'm in the level below Formula 1. You obviously have to name drop Formula 1. But then as soon as you get into, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you get into Formula 1, then uh, then it completely changes and... um. It's nice. You don't have to work as hard for it. So it's <laughs> there's <laughs> there's definitely some nice nice perks of um of the position I'm in. I'm not gonna lie, dude. You just reached like the upper echelon, bro. The tier one. It, like as soon as you upgrade <laughs> from F two to F one, man, it's just like a a completely yeah. different class. I bet. Man, and I it I, is, all I got is. with my fame was twelve year olds asking me if I want to play Fortnite, dude. <laughs> That's my Instagram DMs. Yeah, we so. hey, we got into the wrong industry, Lando. I was like, I got a couple million yeah. followers, which I, I appreciate, bro. But my demographic is ninety eight percent male. When I was younger and single, is that what like, it is? It, go on Instagram now and see actually what the ratio. I mean, I don't think I don't think my ratio is incredible. I think it's it's all right. Oh, it's, so as soon as I got to Formula One, it uh it did actually shift of quite a bit. Of course it did. <laughs> Hold on, mine. <laughs> Is, How do I look at it again? You go to insights, uh, in, or sorry, when you're on oh, your total profile, followers. Oh, I got it. Insights, yep. And then go to total followers. Scroll down. Oh yeah, and then make sure you're not by last seven days. Oh, mine only shows last thirty days. Either way, I am ninety point six percent men. All right. What's yours, Lando? Yeah, what's yours, Lando? I'm not going to say how many men. I'm just going to say 17.6% women. Oh, okay. So I, I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean not in, it's not insane, but before I went into Formula One, it was like, uh, it was more like, um, like Jax. It was more like 90% to 10. And Mine's, I've made it this. Mine's not survive. even not, Hold on. Uh, I'm actually going to tell you. How did you guys find that? Uh, you go to your profile, Insights. Total followers, scroll down to the bottom. Total followers. Dude, okay. I'm telling you, F1 next year, 92% men, 7% women. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, like, back when I was single and much younger, obviously my perspective's a little different now. I had to scroll for days just to find one <laughs> female that DM'd me. I'm in a, I'm like, on, I'm in a happy, is, loving my relationship now. Is this week. <laughs> yeah, and that's all it was. That's all it was. Yeah. Like, my boyfriend's the biggest fan of yours. Can you send him a, a, a message? And I'm like, ah. Yeah, I've been there, bro. We're <laughs> down bad, man. We're down bad. No, I, mean, I, get, I get that as well, though. I, I get a lot of that. It's still... um. Shut up, know, Lando. You see... You're not allowed <laughs> to be in this conversation, bro. You're not in You're bad. <laughs> on that note... Oh, man. Lando, dude. <laughs> this has been such a blast having you on the show, man. It has thank been. You, uh, thank you for coming on. I hope, uh, I hope that when COVID, you know... It, it, dies down and I, I, I know la is a destination for a lot of people you get out here and we can just plan a bunch of different things we'll have you on the show yes. in person show you the compound i've never been um, never been to la man You've you gotta get to out LA? here no never uh, been well, we gotta make that happen. bro there's some beautiful yeah. golf courses out here yeah um, we can make a whole week we can make a whole damn week out of it and have every fun activity under the sun but uh you know, I couldn't be happier for your success, and and you're you're one of the nicest dudes in this, that I've met in, in in the past year easily with with all these opportunities that come up. So, um, I, I, I'm going to continue to be a, a fan of yours, but can't wait to uh, drop in, play more games now that you're back in the off season. So, if for some reason you don't follow Lando already, you don't follow Team Quadrant, go. All the links will be in the description. Show him love. 
And uh, with that being said, for this episode of the Courage and Nade Shot Show, that's going to do it for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave five stars if you're listening on uh, Apple Podcasts. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the 100 Thieves YouTube channel and YouTube. We'll see you fudge later. Come on. I just, I just followed Bye. Team Quadrant. Let's get it. Oh, go. nice. Made it. We made it. I, I, got, I got to work on my British accent, man. It's so bad. We've, known, We've made it. We I, I, I love I love when uh, people it. from the UK say literally, literally. literally. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Lando, that was a fucking blast, man. Uh, sorry if at yeah, some point I sounded like a.